Hello and welcome to another episode of Interactive Biology TV, where we're making biology fun. My name is Leslie Samuel, and in this episode, episode 54, I'm going to be talking about blood pressure and mean arterial pressure. These are the two things I'm going to cover today. Blood pressure, you know, when you go to the doctor's office, one of the first things they do is they take your blood pressure. And you know what? After today, you're going to know exactly what they're doing and what it means if you don't already know. So let's get right into the topic for today. Here we have the heart. And we've been speaking about the heart because we're talking about the cardiovascular system or the circulatory system. And the heart has a very important job. It's pumping the blood throughout the body. And the blood, the blood carries oxygen and nutrients to the muscles and to the other organs that need these in order for you to live, in order for you to do all the things that you are doing right now. So here's the heart. And if we take the heart and we put it inside the human body, you can see here we have the human heart. And it is serving the purpose of pumping the blood through these arteries uh, to the rest of the body. And of course, the blood is coming back via these veins to the heart. And that process goes over and over. It's also sending the heart, the blood to the lungs so that it can get the oxygen that it needs and then send that to the body and so on. We've, we've kind of spoken about that in previous episodes. Now, today we want to talk about blood pressure. And first, I'm going to define blood pressure, and I'm going to do it simply by writing here. Here we have the blood. And over here we have blood vessels. Now, as the heart is beating and it's sending that blood out to the body, it's going via these blood vessels. And because it's being pumped, that is going to exert a pressure on the blood vessels. And we're going to call this pressure a hydrostatic pressure. And the reason we call it a hydrostatic pressure is because blood is a fluid. And when fluids exert pressure on something, that's called hydrostatic pressure. Okay, so the blood is being pumped. It's going through these blood vessels. It's hitting against the walls of the blood vessels, the, the inner lining of the blood vessels. And that is exerting a pressure on those blood vessels. This is what we mean when we say blood pressure. So when the doctor is taking your blood pressure or the nurse is taking your blood pressure, they are checking to see how much pressure is exerted on the blood vessels by the blood. And that is a very important measure when it comes to the health of your body. So when the blood leaves the heart, as we've shown before, the blood then goes into the aorta, which is this vessel that's leaving from the heart. And then that goes down here. This is also the, this is called the descending aorta, and it goes via these other um, blood vessels to the rest of the body. Now, it would make sense to understand that the closer you are to the heart, the more you're going to feel that pressure. If you are right by the heart, you're going to feel more pressure than if you are all the way down here in the toes, right? Because here is where the heart is beating. And the farther away you go from that, the lower the pressure is going to be. So let's look at how this works. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little graph here. I just realized that I can use a ruler on my tablet, which makes sense, but I just never thought about it. So here we have my the y-axis. And then here we are going to draw the x-axis. And what I'm going to do is kind of chart the blood as it's going um, the blood pressure as the blood is going from the heart to the first it's going to go via the aorta. So let me write 
aorta and that's right here and as it leaves the aorta it's going to go to some small a little smaller vessels and those are called arteries and then from there it's going to go even smaller to the arterioles and then from there it's going to go to the capillaries i'm just going to write here cap and that is where it actually crosses over from being in the arteries section, so arteries and arterioles, to where it's going into the veins. But before it goes to the veins, it's going to go via the venules. And then the veins, and when it's in the venules and the veins, it's because it's going back to the heart, eventually via the vena cava all right so we're going away from the heart via the aorta and then we go to the arteries we're going away a, a very easy way of remembering this is the a in arteries and arterioles and aorta is going away from the heart and then when it reaches the tissues and the organs it's going to have an exchange in the capillaries where it then goes into the venules to the veins and then back via the vena cava to the heart all right and um let's look at pressure on the y-axis so i'm going to give these some values of 20 let me just write them in here first Okay, it's not fully evenly spaced, but 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, and 140. And on the y-axis, we're dealing, I'm just going to write it over here, with pressure in millimeters of mercury. All right, so... When the heart contracts, okay, we have ventricular contraction, and that's when we're going to get the, the greatest amount of pressure because the ventricles are larger than the atria, and when they contract, sending the, the blood to the rest of the body, that's going to give you the systolic pressure, which is going to be the greatest pressure. So we're going to say here, let me draw this in, let's go with red, and the ventricles are contracting, so the pressure is going to increase significantly and then as the atria contract you're gonna get that little bump there and that process continues as the heart beats continues as the heart beats we're in the arteries and as we go away from the arteries and into the arterioles what you're gonna see we're getting away from the heart a little bit. So the pressure is going to start kind of going down, going down. And as you go away, you're going to see smaller fluctuations. You're not getting as great of an effect. And as we reach into the capillaries, it's kind of dying down even more. And the pressure is going to continue going down and down until on the way back to the heart, there's hardly any pressure remaining. I mean, in comparison to up here, where we had pressures of up to 120, um, or sometimes even more in this situation, um, millimeters of mercury, in comparison, the farther away we get from the heart, and as the blood is being pushed back to the heart, we don't get these fluctuations in pressure, and there's significantly less pressure as the blood is going back to the heart. Now, when the doctor takes your pressure and the doctor says you are in excellent health, your blood pressure is great, what is the numbers that you usually hear? The numbers that you usually hear are 120 over 80. And what that refers to, of course, at the top, we have the systolic pressure. And here we have the diastolic 
pressure. All right, systolic pressure and diastolic pressure. Systolic is during systole contraction, so that's the higher point. And diastolic is during relaxation where we have a lower point. And if you have that 120 over 80, you are a happy camper. All is well with the world, at least with where your blood pressure is concerned. And that's what we want to have. So that is blood pressure. Um, when you're measuring blood pressure, you're measuring the, dis the difference between systole and diastole, so contraction and relaxation. Now let's talk a little bit about mean arterial pressure. And I'm just going to write M A P for short. And mean arterial pressure, when you hear the word mean, you always think average. The mean arterial pressure is basically the average pressure in the arteries. So we're not looking at the fluctuations. We are looking at the average. And if we were to take the average here, I'm just going to plot a second line. It would look something like this. Okay, so a straight line here. And as it goes down, it's going to look a little like this until where we have a straight line here, it follows that straight line. And that gives us the average pressure in the arteries. And there's a formula that we use to calculate mean arterial pressure. Mean arterial pressure, M-A-P, is going to be equal to C-O times P-R. Now, two of these you know already, MAP, mean arterial pressure, and CO, you should know that that is cardiac output. PR is one that we haven't covered, and PR is peripheral resistance. So as I said, MAP is equal to CO times PR. We're going to go more into peripheral resistance in the next episode, so I'm not going to deal too much with this. The main thing you want to know is the two factors that are going to influence mean arterial pressure is cardiac output and peripheral resistance. Peripheral resistance is basically, we're going to define that as... Opposition to blood flow. Okay, the blood is flowing, but of course there's going to be some resistance. There's going to be friction between the blood and the walls of the blood vessels and so forth. Now there's another way of calculating mean arterial pressure. Uh, mean arterial pressure is also equal to diastolic. blood pressure, so that's during diastole, relaxation, plus 1 third times systolic blood pressure minus diastolic blood pressure pressure. My handwriting is getting kind of sloppy there, but you get the point. Um, so once again, if we were looking at that graph where we had something kind of looking like this in the beginning, and if this is 80, and this is 120, the mean arterial pressure is going to be equal to 80 plus one third of 120 minus 80 is 40. And that's going to be equal to 80 plus, let's see, one third of 40. Let's go with 13.3. Um, I'm just going to leave it at 13. So mean arterial pressure would be equal to 93. And that's going to be in millimeters of mercury.
All right, so that's mean arterial pressure. Um, two ways to calculate it, cardiac output times peripheral resistance. We've dealt with cardiac output. That's the amount of blood pumped by the heart every minute, and we're multiplying that by peripheral resistance, which is the opposition to blood flow. In episode 55, we're going to go a little more into peripheral resistance. Or we can take the diastolic blood pressure plus one-third of the difference between the systolic and diastolic blood pressures, which in this case would be 80 plus a third of 40, which would be approximately 13, which gives us 93 millimeters of mercury. That's pretty much it for this episode. Of course, if you want to check out some more biology videos and other resources like quizzes and the community that we have at Interactive Biology, you can check out the website at interactive-biology.com. That's all for now, and I'll see you in the next one.